Hi, I'm Aisha Abril. Um, I'm a junior in mechanical engineering, and I'm business logistics lead and a mechanical team member on the Stanford Solar Car Project. Our project began about 25 years ago and is a completely student-run organization. We design and build a new solar car every two years, which comprises a cycle. And we compete in the World Solar Challenge, or WSC, in Australia, which essentially runs across the entire Australian outback. Within WSC, the goal of our class is to finish first and fastest, without running out of charge and while still obeying Australian speed limits. But WSC is called a challenge and not a race for a reason. And that's because half the victory is in finishing it all. Building a car is a challenge. Building an efficient car is an even bigger challenge. And in solar car racing, the key is efficiency. We've been building solar cars for 25 years because the battle for efficiency is never over. To push the boundaries of what we can do, we put almost unreasonable limits on ourselves when we're building solar cars. The simple reason why we design solar cars is because it's hard. Solar cars are a well-packaged design problem, including not just solar technology, but aerodynamics, composites, electrical, and software, and people tend to learn a lot from it. You see, we not only build solar cars, but something sexier, and that's reasonable and conservative engineers. <laughs> and it's true. Designing solar cars teaches us valuable engineering lessons, and today I've got three engineering lessons to tell you. We'll start with number one, go fast, but not recklessly fast. And this has dual meaning. Literally, drive carefully. But it also means to be wary of overzealous innovation. In the Silicon Valley and at Stanford, we're inspired to innovate. It's about ideation and thinking outside the box, going very fast. But in this environment, it's sometimes difficult to differentiate between going fast and going recklessly fast. On our team, many of the innovative ideas we have are often not worth the price that we pay for them. This is Zenith, our car from four years and two cycles ago. Zenith is our most ambitious car to date, had one of our biggest budgets and some of our best engineers. The design philosophy behind Zenith was to choose a couple really cool technologies to gain new member interest and to keep those new members devoted through that interest. With Zenith, we wanted to make an unusually thin solar car with the first and only glass-topped array on a solar car. But the thing about Zenith was that its shape was great for a missile and would have done phenomenally in the solar air race. But it was a solar car. Admittedly, the glass-topped array was the coolest part of Zenith, and Zenith was and still is sexy. <laughs> but we were pushing so hard to create something different, only further limiting on ourselves on top of a series of pre-existing time and design constraints that we had to deal with. In particular, the design of Zenith's suspension was incredibly constrained by how thin the car was. There just wasn't enough room to fit it. And for y'all non-car folk out there, you need a suspension. It's important. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so to surmount this design challenge, we made our suspension so compact that it didn't do its job and essentially ruined the aerodynamic performance of the car. Zenith was so ambitious that we didn't have time at the end to work out the kinks. And that takes me to our second lesson for today. Lesson number two. Test it. Test it again, and test it more. <laughs> the extra features we added to Zenith left no extra time at the end for testing. The car might have performed better, despite any of the things I mentioned earlier, had it been reliable. To get the full performance of Zenith, the team had to debug the entire car. Large, unanticipated problems popped up during the race. To begin with, our motor was incorrectly manufactured, and because of this, during the race, what was supposed to be a routine tire change turned into a four-hour repair fiasco on the side of the road after some wires pulled loose out of our motor. Now, this was a spectacular failure that could have been confronted earlier and then avoided through none other than testing. Now, 
No amount of it's shiny and it's the future can withstand 3,000 kilometers across the Australian outback. <laughs> what testing gives you <laughs> is reliability. Something less shiny, but far more valuable. Now, Zenith was built on the Talladega Nights philosophy, if you're familiar with it. <laughs> if you're not first, you're last. This is what lesson number two is about. Reliability will catch up. I present Luminos, our latest, most successful, and most reliable vehicle. This past October in the World Solar Challenge, Luminos crossed fourth overall, making it the top American solar car. <laughs> the design philosophy behind Luminos was not to get first, but to get to top five, and we prioritized reliability over performance. We axed projects that weren't going to make the car faster. And during the two months we had before we shipped the car to Australia, we tested. Before the race, Luminos had nearly 10,000 kilometers on its odometer. But let's back up for a second. Where did lesson number two even come from? A lesson about the importance of testing. Luminos certainly used the lesson to its great advantage, but the lesson itself came from Zenith. And that takes me to our final lesson for today. Lesson number three, use failure as a foundation for success. Success is also a foundation for success. <laughs> but failure is good too. Perhaps surprisingly, many of the failed ideas in Zenith produced produce successful ones in Luminos. And what had looked like bad designs had simply th been things with unwise design constraints. In particular, the suspension in Zenith translated into a successful suspension in Luminos, but was geometrically different without the space constraints that Luminos had had. And so out of a seeming failure came a great success in Luminos. With Luminos, we took the route of reliability. We didn't go for anything fancy and built what's fondly become known as the solar whale but we ended up with something really special. And now we've arrived at our team as it is today. The alumni of the past three vehicles continue to stick around, and it's a tradition for them to bring us donuts when they come visit the shop. They're always there for the important parts. And when Luminos crossed the finish line in fourth, they were there and surprised us all with donuts. <laughs> Over the course of four years, we learned where to draw the line along with the vast importance of testing, and built on all of that to get where we are today. Why do we build a solar car? Because it's hard. Because there are so many things that can go terribly, terribly wrong, that when finally you get them to all go right, it's the best. Now, we're building on the solid foundation of reliability that we have from Luminos, and we're ready to add some of the ambition we left behind with Zenith. And on our team, we have three rules to guide us moving forward. And these are the three rules of solar car. Number one, don't f*** up. <laughs> Two, go fast. And three, don't f*** up. <laughs> this is clearly just a joke, but at its heart, these rules encompass the lessons I've told you today. Luminos is not the end of our story. Not by a long shot. Thank you.